Uh, Nigel. <laughs> so that's voice one. Two. No three. No four. Five. Six. Seven. Back to one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight voices. So there's three and four missing. Two, missing four. Sorry, missing three, missing four. Five, six, seven. So that's channel one. Channel two is, that's one. That's two. No three. There is a four. Five, six, seven, but sounds different. And eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. That's good. So that's positive. So that's one, two, three is missing, no oscillator. Four is missing, no oscillator. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, no three, no four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So there is no, there's, a, there's an issue with either the envelope generator uh, for the VCA or the one or a number of final VCA outputs on channel one, voices three and four. Right, uh, so going back to channel two, we've got one, two, we're missing three, we've got four, five, six, seven, we've got eight. So one, two, missing three, four, five, six, seems to be very similar again. So what those tests are telling me is um, the oscillators could be faulty on those voices which are not there. It's maybe a, unlikely all three of them are. Um, what it's pointing me towards is within the setting where you've got sort of, uh, sine wave only, that bypasses the filter. So that's kind of telling me it's not a filter issue. Um, it could still be a VCO issue. I suspect more likely it's a VCA or an envelope generator issue. So it's not terrible. It's it's pretty good for something that's been stood for a, for a number of years. Um, the one the thing I do want to check is the velocity and the aftertouch. Hmm, that's interesting. I've never got a. No. Yeah, so now I've turned it on, there's a, there's a continuous, you can hear that kind of. Yeah. So that might be, so that's voice one. Oh, it's happening to them all. Okay, um, that sounds like a VCA issue. Yeah, so the, the voice that's droning is not three or four, it's number one, so there's possibly five, uh, four voices which are faulty. And I'm sure as longer it's left on, the more you will probably find. What I'm not getting, which is interesting, is... Yeah, the velocity on the um, level is working, but the velocity on the... Yeah, velocity on the... Uh, on the filter isn't working. That would be possibly a slider issue or something else. Um, after touch, is that working? Yeah. So that's working. There's only one after touch and yeah. velocity sensor for the for each key. Yeah. And then it's shared between the two levels. Mm. When I get to the second level, if if those after touch, um, sorry, if those velocity values are working, mm. that means that the velocity is probably working. It's just something local to channel one, which could yeah, be yeah. a slider, it could yeah. be um, all sorts of things. There's lots of VCAs, there's lots of other mixing, um, but it. 
definitely is working. Mm. So for each velocity and after touch, um, and for the brilliance and for the level, there's eight VCAs per channel, and that's replicated over the, the keys. So I know that, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it seems to be, without testing every key, it seems like all eight channels are there, apart from the two voices I can't test on channel one. Yeah, so far I'm just doing an octave worth of sensors at the bottom. They're working. Yeah, you can't even go. So I'm, I'd be confident that all of them are working. They may need some cleaning. Yeah, there's a global um, crackling sound that could be coming from all sorts of places. I mean, given it's not been turned on for yeah. 20 plus years, it's possibly it's more likely. Yeah. Um, the pitch bend is really noisy. That's common and curable. That's really noisy. That's common and definitely curable. <laughs> or a fault. I'm not too concerned about the ribbon. The ribbon is working, it is continuous, there's no uh, breaks in the spring. Um, it's an original spring as far as I can tell, so can't rule it out breaking at some point, but it is working. Yeah, it's calibrating. Um, yeah, but the clicking is on everything, which is a bit... I don't think it's coming from the chorus generator. Uh, so going back to channel two. Velocity is an aftertouch. Yeah, there's no velocity on channel two for brilliance or, or level. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, it's working now. It's the fader. So at the top it cuts out and in the middle it's actually working. So that'll be um, a dirty fader. It makes me wonder if it's the same for velocity as well. Uh, for brilliance. Okay, so brilliance is definitely not working the same as channel one. Um, velocity level is working on channel one and two, so I suspect brilliance is fine on the touch. Yeah, on channel two, that's fine. Yeah, that's working. So there's a common issue, which is um, brilliance on both channel one and two do not work. Velocity uh, level works on channel two, but not channel one. I suspect it's a, either a, cable, um, a slider issue or, or something else. Um, the problem with the brilliance will be a global problem, like a VCA or a buffer or something common to both um, of those channels, but it's not, it's not serious. Um, so I'm happy there. Sh shooting is dreadful, so that's to be expected. Um, brilliance on the low. Yeah, that's working. Yep, so there's no crosstalk between those two high and low brilliance. Yeah. Yep, so all, all those um, keyboard control high and lows are good. Uh, initial. Yeah, where there is a working voice, it pitch bends, and let's get. Yeah, noise isn't working on the sub oscillator, but it is working on the on the individual voices. But the aftertouch, LFO aftertouch is working. Yeah, that's working. LFO aftertouches are all good. Sub oscillator is all good. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I think it's a dirty switch. Yeah. Definitely needs cleaning, but it's fine. Channel 2. Yeah, that's the same. So the only thing to test is modulation. Ring mod, sorry.
either the envelope generator for the ring mod or controls or something else, maybe a VCA uh, in the envelope section is not working. I get speed just on the speed, but I don't get any depth. That's what you know. Yeah, there's, there's no attack. Yeah, the decay sort of works, but it's not right, so that may be a calibration, but I suspect there's something not right about it. Yeah, detune works, that's fine. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Try that again. Okay, so we've got droop on the CBs, which wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, so if you have long sustains, you can hear the control voltages for the oscillators drooping. And that's on keyboard, keyboard one. So listen to keyboard two. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, so essentially uh, the sample and holds for the keyboard on keyboard mode one have got a lot of droop on, so that'll be the moisture ingress into the PCB hold capacitors, um, the op amp or something else, definitely sortable, definitely not right, but yeah, that's not too bad. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually, the crackling's getting a lot worse, it's continually got louder. Even though there's a constant crackle. Yeah, all the same voices that are not working, were not working, are still not working. There's no further voices that are dead. So, yeah, that's uh, remarkably, for its age and for the fact it's not been stood for, um, it's been stood for a while, that's not terrible. That really isn't that bad. There's a lot of work there is for whoever is lucky enough to get this. They, they will have to do a lot of work, um, a lot of cleaning, stripping down, uh, relubricating sliders and switches, possibly cleaning um, after touch sensors. Definitely a full recap of all capacitors. I suspect what's probably happened on some of the voice cards that don't work is capacitors have eaten through tracks. So if we've got five minutes, I'd like to have a look at voices three and four on channel one and just see if there's any um, track damage on the voice cards because I suspect what's happened is the capacitors have physically leaked and corroded the tracks. This is voice three where you were... Of channel one, yeah. So the so that's capacitors that's... have leaked. Yeah. There's a good probability that um, a, a small number of tracks have been broken, which may be impeding you know, maybe stopping the card mm -hmm. from making a sound. They have leaked, they're not great. Yeah. Um, there's no damage on the front, so on the top side. I can't see any corrosion affecting any other comp components. And the IG chips look really good. It's only on the back side where there is the solder resist layer and you can see it's got under, under that because that should be bright copper, it's very dull. Um, only when you clear the component, when you remove the components and then remove the solder resist will you know for definite how bad that corrosion actually is. There is still potential for either, for any of these voice cards still to be voice chip or VCA related. There's also the potential for it to be a broken track or a corroded track. So there's lots of possibilities and, and if you're gonna buy a CS80, you, you know at some point in its life, you are gonna to have to change some of the IG chips. Um, but if it just turns out to be um, a broken track or a corroded track, then, then that's really, it is possible, I'm not saying it's definite, but it's definitely possible and it's something to bear in mind. Yeah, so as a CS80 owner, if I was buying it in this condition, I would definitely not be surprised for a tech to come around and say, yeah, it needs a complete refurb, overhaul, usual stuff doing. I would expect that. I wouldn't purchase this particular CS80 hoping that I could get away with a recalibration or a you know really quick um, simple repair it, it doesn't it deserves better than that but it does work so yeah I'm really 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 surprised